Hi there, welcome to Nappy Invest, the second view inspired financial year 23 result video. And in this particular video, we are going to be focusing on a company or featuring a company that I knew absolutely nothing about. That company is Excelsior Capital, T code ECL. This company does not have a logo. In fact, if you try to find their website, good luck. They actually do have a website, but it's under a different name. And it's not updated all that often. So you might be thinking this is a completely awful company, uh, but you might be wrong. Because as I looked at Excelsior Capital, I was really intrigued by their financial year results. And as I dug even deeper into this company's history, I became even more intrigued. Now, Excelsior Capital seems like it might be either a fund manager or a listed investment company or LIC. And that would be a half true. Now, this company was formed back in 1991, listed on the ASX in 1993 as CMI, which is an electrical product manufacturer and distributor, primarily focused on supplying electrical products and whatnot to the mining, infrastructure, construction sectors. But then something happened in 2016, and they did change their business changed their name from CMI to Excelsior Capital, and they started their own LIC, which actually intrigues me. But there's other things about this company that are really intrigues me, particularly around their CMI business, the electrical con electrical product business, because even though they did change business and business model and name in 2016, they kept the electrical products business. And that part of the company has been going absolutely gangbusters over the past three years. So let's get into the financial year 23 results for this company. Before I do that, I have drawn out the next company I'll be doing, and it's actually Supply Network. And after that, I'm going to actually draw out another company. So after Supply Network, I am going to do a video on, I won't look, do a video on ATP which I believe is the Pearl Company, some sort of Pearl Company, and have a look at that chart, ATP. Absolutely spectacular chart because of their absolutely spectacular results, and no wonder someone recommended that company. Now, I'm going to try to do these videos quite quick because I have a lot of videos to do in this series, over 40. So let's get on to it. Let's have a look at this company's results. I've got to move my head there. Revenue, $104.9 million increasing 12% on last year. And in fact, revenue has been increasing ever since 2016. Profit of 10.2 million. That's going to be very important in terms of why I find this company really intriguing now. I'm comparing the profit to not only the markup of this company, but also the enterprise value of this company, which we'll look at in the next slide. Not only that, profit increased 28% on last year, one of the reasons why profit increased at a greater rate than revenue is because gross margins increased up to 27%. And this is a good sign for this company. And I'll talk about that when we look at the last 10 years in terms of gross margins. There were some concerning signs until two years ago. Operating cash flow and free cash flow, fairly similar to the profit. And this company has net cash, no debt, but cash of $23 million. And that's also very important when you are discussing this company. Maybe not only discussing this company, researching this company. Return on equity, 16%. That's quite good. Return on invested capital, 19.7%. The reason that it's higher than return on equity is because this company is net cash. So those two quality metrics are sort of numbers I am looking for in every company I am researching. Now, the question is, has this company seen their return on equity and return on invested capital above 10% on a consistent basis? The answer to that is no, particularly with return on equity. Return on equity has increased above 10% over the last few years. Historically, it has been below 10%. Equity, 68.5 million, a nice increase on last year, about a $9 million increase. Only 29 million, 29 million shares on issue. This is important. And one of the reasons why probably I have not heard this company and most investors on the ASX have not heard this company. Very limited shares on issue, which does lead to liquidity issues. And another reason why there is liquidity issues around this company 
is because the larger shareholder, uh, I think it's Leanne Catalan, who is a director of this company, owns 50.2% of the shares. And she has been a director of this company since 2011. So she he's invested, really invested in this company and the fortunes of this company. So skin in the game. Now we come to the important parts of this company. Market cap. At the end of training on September 11, $77 million. Enterprise value, $54 million. Now compare the market cap and enterprise value to the profit. So over $10 million of profit. So straight away, you can see the valuation metrics of this company are going to be really, really low. So let's have a look at how low they are in the next slide. Okay, so the P ratio, 7.5. That is screaming cheap, uh, particularly for a company that grew their profit by 28% in the past year. In fact, even companies that are not growing have a PE ratio greater than 7.5%. So there is some sort of disconnect between the valuation of this company and the market. So either the market hasn't discovered this company just yet, or the market is concerned about the liquidity of the company, which is fair enough, or the market is wary that the growth this company has experienced in the last few years, and we look at the revenue growth in the next slide, that the market doesn't think that can continue because if that growth in profit and revenue and gross margins can continue, a P-E ratio of 7.5 is ridiculously, ridiculously low. Price to sales ratio, 0.73. I'm not concerned about that. EV to free cash flow, 5.3. That is absurdly low. Because this company has net cash of $23 million. Free cash flow is fairly similar to the profit. So even their price to free cash flow is around 5.3. That does seem really low. That means in five years' time, you'll be able to make your money back with this company. Now, this company is a dividend-paying company. I think it was 6.5 cents, maybe yeah, about 6, 6.5 cents in the last year. So then the dividend yield of the company is around 2%. And there is scope for this company to increase the dividends over time because when you do look at the cash flow statement, they only spent $1.7 million in the past year on dividends and they increased their cash on hand by over five, actually it's just under $5 million. Also did a reverse DCF on this company. What would the earnings per share have to increase or decrease to justify the current valuation if you are seeking a 10% return on the company? And even if this company decrease the earnings per share by 1.8% per year, you still could get a 10% return in this company. So there is an argument that this company is ridiculously cheap right now. Does that mean I'll be taking a position in this company? Not necessarily so. And we'll talk about reasons why when we look at the chart. Now to the history, the revenue history, also gross margins and income of this company over the past 10 years. Now, Excelsior Capital is a cyclical company because their electrical products, I'm not even going to talk about the listed investment company because I did have a look at what they're investing in, investing in, and it's mainly unlisted uh, managed funds, that sort of thing. They do have one investment in an ASX listed company, but the value of that investment is $23,000, so it's insignificant. So this is a cyclical company because they are servicing the mining industry. And that does make sense. When you look at the revenue history of this company, the low point in the revenue was in 2016, which was the bottom of the mining cycle. And ever since then, revenue has been increasing. In fact, revenue has more than doubled since 2016, increasing from $40.8 million to over $100 million. Unfortunately, during that period, gross margins of this company was dropping. And it was dropping every single year. And that was concerning. In fact, gross margins fell from 37% in 2016 down to 25% in 2021. And then all of a sudden in 2022, gross margins started to increase. Not sure why, but they've actually increased a few points percentage, percentage points since then. So not only has this company seen increasing revenue, in fact, revenue has started to accelerate the last few years, but also increases in gross margins. And what that means when you've got increasing revenue, increasing gross margins, that means income or profit starts to accelerate. So profit has more than doubled in the past two years 
from 5.2 million to 10.3 million. In fact, since 2020, uh, profit has increased from 3.7 million to 10.3 million. So the question is, can this company continue this momentum over the next few years? The only thing to be wary about is um, some sort of um, you know movement into a downward cycle or downward spiral in the mining sector. And there's nothing like that on the horizon just yet. But you do have to keep that in the back of your mind because this company will be highly affected by any downswing in mining activity. Now let's have a look at the chart for Excessio Capital. And this is actually the weekly chart going back to the middle of 2016. We're actually middle of 2015. And remember, 2016 was the bottom of the cycle for this company. Share price actually fell to about 90 or 80 cents. And because this company listed on the ASX back in 1993, you'll be able to actually look at the history of this company. And the share price has increased over the past 30 years, but at times the share price does fall a fair bit. So the low or hit all time low for this company is around 80 or 90 cents. But share price is in an uptrend. In fact, the share price of this company moved into an uptrend in the middle of 2020 and has remained in an uptrend ever since. In fact, the share price has increased from around about $1.30 up to $2. And what was it, 65 cents at the end of trading on September 11th. Now, you can't really see it by looking at the weekly chart, but the shares in this company are illiquidly traded. In fact, shares were traded on September 11th, but the last time shares were traded in this company was actually August the 31st. So there was about eight, seven or eight trading days when there were no shares traded. I also had a look at the depth of buyers and sellers. There are only two buyers on the depth chart, depth, whatever you call it. There were no sellers. So even if you were desperate to buy shares in this company, you couldn't, you wouldn't be able to, because there's no one willing to sell shares in this company right now. More than likely, that will change. So if you were keen on taking a position in this company, I think you'd have to be a little bit patient. Put a bid in, a limit order bid into the market. You can't put a, a market order in because at, at this point in time, there is no market. There's no market, no one willing to sell our shares in this company. And put it in sort of a sneakily low bid. So share price right now is something like 265. So put it in at 240. And there is possibility it might be hit because someone might come along, a shareholder might come along, and they're desperate to sell and they'll just dump on market. I've seen that happen quite a few times. And I think on occasion it does happen to Excelsior Capital. So I think you can be patient with this company if you like what you've heard in today's video. I'm very thankful for whoever suggested Excelsior Capital because I really have not done any research on this company in the past and I was intrigued by what I saw. So I have actually put this company onto my watch list. I'll be following the fortunes of the share price over the next few weeks, next few months. And possibly I will take a position in this company because it does look really, really cheap. The only wary thing I have is a regards to the cycle nature of this company and the very fact that shares in this company are illiquidly traded. Now, typically, I wouldn't be concerned by that, but I am a little bit more concerned around a cyclical, cyclical company, which means if the tide does turn negative for Celsius Capital uh, and mining, then it might be hard to get out of, or if you do want to sell your shares, you might have to sell at a fairly big discount. So keep that in the back of your mind if you are wanting to take a position in this company. But at this point in time, on September 11, 2023, things are moving very well for this company, but business-wise and also on the chart. So if you do have any questions, any thoughts about Excelsior Capital, love to hear your opinion, your thoughts. So leave them in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for the video. Have a good day. Bye.